Joining us now from the College of Asia and the Pacific at ANU is Professor John Blaxland. Thanks so much for your time. A lot happening on the security and regional front. First of all, out of Osmin, mm. we heard talk about missiles mm. and this intermediate ground-based missiles that the new Defence Secretary wants based in the region. The Chinese Foreign Ministry has responded, says the suggestion is offensive and that they will be not sitting idly by mm. if these are to be deployed as the US has indicated. Mm. This is, is this a concern to you? To be fair, look, uh, China isn't standing idly by already. It's developing infrastructure in Cambodia. It's developed infrastructure in the South China Sea. It's uh, acting pretty forthrightly across our space uh, in a way that is generating undue, uh, you know, a, a fair amount of concern. It, it's generating unease about China's position. And uh, so, in that light, what uh, the US administration is doing in pushing for Australia to do more is, on one level, understandable, but it comes in, in, in light of uh, concerns about the US pushing a, a little bit too hard, I think. The bottom line is Australia is doing uh, more than it has in the past. There's been, I think, a, a certain uh, reawakening, if you like, in Australia of the security dimension to our relationship with China and with the United States that, uh, that I think Mike Pompeo's remarks uh, don't quite uh, recognise. They don't seem to capture what's already transpiring, what's already changing. Well, he said that uh, the US had been asleep at the switch, is the way he put it. Mm. Uh, clearly, some in our uh, security uh, apparatus in Canberra and, and uh, in the government believe we've also been asleep at the switch or at the wheel, however you, you want to put it. Mm. But do you think that with the US, Australia, Japan and others that people have woken up now to the reality? Or, yeah. and, and the question is, is it too late, given what you've said about China not sitting, sitting idly by? They're certainly not in the South China Sea, for example. No, well, I mean, we, we, we can't uh, do anything but start from where we are today. And it's not too late to act, to, to take initiatives that are in our interests. But it's interesting and it's worthwhile differentiating from the American position from ours. The bottom line is the United States has been fixated on Russia and on Russian interference for a long time. So you go to Washington and you hear people talk a lot about Putin, about Russia, about interference. Uh, not so here, interesting, when Americans come here, they, they tend to be a bit surprised to hear more about China than about Russia. Um, and because the world looks differently from Canberra and from, from Australia than it does from the United States. Um, and for us, Russia matters less than China does. Um, and so I think it's important to make that differentiation. So when, when the Americans come and when Mike Pompeo comes and talks about us waking up to China, look, most people in, in, in Australia are already aware there's a growing realisation about the challenges posed by China, uh, we, we see this on the cyber front. We see this on the conventional security front. We're seeing, uh, you know, a, a re-emergence of a sense of the great power contestation that's at play and that Australia is sandwiched between the two and that Australia has to walk a very fine and delicate line to maintain its interests in the face of competing pressures uh, from China and the United States. You, um, well, you know, you've read your colleague Hugh White's mm. arguments on this. One of the things he points out is that Australia needs to be cautious as what, the way we move ahead in the sense that India as well needs to be factored in here. Mm. And there could be a situation in the coming years where India has control of one sphere, China of the other, and the US its own. Uh, look, that is... Hugh White is masterful at uh, presenting stark pictures and generating de really useful debate, and I've uh, contributed to it. I'm very grateful for it. I think, though, that that is uh, an unduly uh, stark and uh, two-dimensional picture of an equation that is probably a little bit more nuanced than that. Um, so, uh, yes, India is on the rise. Uh, India, its interests uh, overlap with ours more so than I think most people realise. Uh, India is focused north. Its security challenges are on its land borders with China and with Pakistan. Um, and the, the thought of India emerging as some kind of threat to Australia uh, is, I think, uh, it's, far, it's, a long, it's a long shot. It's not completely implausible, but it's a long shot. 
Uh, I think there are ones that are much closer to us that are much more realistic uh, and that require us to engage in a, in a more nuanced way, particularly with our neighbours. And this is where is, I think... Is there any suggestion or possibility, do you think? I mean, I know the government said there won't be missiles in the top end, mm. but that's now. Mm. Obviously, Japan, Korea, Guam would be the most likely setting for any such intermediate missile. Yeah. But down the track, would Northern Australia be attractive to the US? Well, there's a couple of things to bear in mind here. One is we've got to think about our relationship with Indonesia. Uh, so when we talk about basing missiles in northern Australia, what, what's, the, what's in range of those missiles? And it's Indonesia. Now, the Indonesians are already a little bit uneasy about Australia. We've got a track record of poking them in the eye over beef boats, spies, clemency, Timor, Papua and Jerusalem. The list is long. We, we're quite insensitive when it comes to thinking about the world, how it, view, how it looks from Jakarta's point of view. So I think we need to think about that. But in terms of missiles, there actually is an argument to be, ha to be had about ballistic missile defence and whether or not Australia should develop its own indigenous capability rather than leasing or, you know, subletting the task to the Americans, um, whether or not we need to be doing something. Uh, there's some discussion on that already, but I think we could take that a lot further. But I don't think it helps for us to be saying, you know, we should just let the Americans do that. And clearly, Linda Reynolds, the Defence Minister, gets that. She appreciates that there's, uh, it's not in Australia's interests to be taking that step at this juncture. Professor John Blacksland from the ANU, as always, great to get your insights. Thank you.